morning, everyone. Thank you, Chrissy, for the very kind introduction. Um, it's an honour to be here with all of you to celebrate International Women's Day and Fair Trade Fortnight, so thank you very much for inviting me. Um, David was an early supporter of Divine Chocolate and um, its innovative business model, and it's wonderful to see how successful the business is today, almost 20 years on. Um, the key message, I think, that I want to convey um, through what I'm going to say over the next few minutes is that momentum for change on gender equality um, really is building, and there's a critical time now, um, and particularly over the next few years, to really build that momentum and make change happen. And within that, the discussion on empowering women in agriculture supply chains comes at a really key moment. Um, I was involved in the negotiation of the Sustainable Development Goals, which culminated in the September summit at the UN in 2015. And one of the clear takeaways from that was that the momentum around goal five, which is the gender equality goal, um, I think had the, the most compelling civil society and international traction and narrative behind it. And the determination, particularly in the United Nations um, uh, collective, um, on gender equality now is stronger than ever before. So women's economic empowerment now, as a result of all of this, in the changing world of work, um, is a the theme of this year's Commission on the Status of Women, which many of you know is about to start, and will also be a focus of the UN high-level political forum's discussion on the global goals in July. So there are a series of really important events. So why is this so important? Well, I find the statistics on this extremely compelling. Um, on current trends, at the current rate of change, it's going to take over 100 years at least before girls and women have the same rights as boys and men. Gender equality is integral to human rights. It's critical, we think, also for economic growth and critical as a business case in its own right. Um, you'll have heard, I, I, I hope, the, McKinsey, the often quoted McKinsey statistic that if women participated in labour markets on an even footing with men, this could add um, up to 12 trillion to global, to global GDP by 2025. So making a clear case and moving the dial forward on women's economic empowerment with new audiences, particularly business and economic policy makers and decision makers, was a big objective for the UK, for the UK government, in founding the UN Secretary General's high-level panel on women's economic empowerment. The panel brought together governments, businesses and civil society, including Oxfam, and has ensued a call to action across seven drivers of change which are needed to empower women's economic empowerment um, over, over the next decade. And those seven drivers are represented here. The drivers apply across four key areas of work in particular, including agriculture, where it's clear that the need for action is particularly urgent. And I think Stephanie set out absolutely beautifully how all of this comes together in the agriculture space in particular. Women farmers consistently produce up to 25% less than their male counterparts, primarily due to unequal access to land and farm materials, and barriers including social norms preventing their equal participation in markets. So tackling this gender gap, according to the FAO, could directly contribute to agricultural growth and reduce the number of hungry people by 100 to 150 million. Furthermore, we think that the higher female earnings have very strong potential to translate into greater investment in children's education, health and nutrition, which leads to economic growth in the longer term. So there really is a very, very strong and powerful case to tackle the inequalities and the agriculture sector for multiple and interrelated reasons. So I want to give you um, a quick flavour of what DFID is doing um, in this space in particular. Um, some of you will have seen, I'm sure, I hope, that we've launched our economic development strategy recently. Um, and through that economic development strategy, we've, made it, we've sent a very clear signal that we want to place women and girls, particularly women's economic empowerment, at the centre of our economic development work and everything we do going forward. So I'm just going to take you through a couple of examples of what we're doing in agriculture in particular as part of this strategy. Critically, we're bringing more poorer women, particularly smallholders, into commercial supply chains like those of Divine. So for example, in Uganda, we're working with Asante Mama, which is, which is shown there, 
to bring in 12,000 smallholders into the organic cocoa supply chain. It's still early days of this particular project, um, but the first market cocoa pods have been formed, and we hope that the product will soon reach the market. But we really think more broadly that there's a real potential for fair trade and organic product certification to drive change in the way that consumers behave. I think Erin set out the case really, really well um, for raising consumer awareness and seeing that change being driven across the market. We're convinced that higher returns and access to international markets for women farmers can be achieved through change such as that. So we're keen to build on the experience of Asante Mama of bringing smallholders into those supply chains and increase the role played by women in other product markets um, in order to achieve that scale up of our impact. We'll also provide development capital through organisations such as CDC and the International Finance Corporation to drive agricultural growth and create agriculture-related jobs that benefit women in particular. One of the programmes that DFID funds is called the Global Agriculture and Food Security Programme, and that has recently guaranteed bank lending in the Côte d'Ivoire, um, which will support, we hope, um, 80 million of new loans to small and medium-sized enterprises with a very strong focus on women and cocoa-related SMEs. In DFID, we also work at the market system level to improve the rights of women smallholders in relation to land tenure in particular and access to farm inputs and financial services. So from 2011 to 2015, we've helped over 3 million women improve their land rights and over 36 million women to, improve access, to have improved access to financial services. Our market systems programmes um, look to remove the barriers faced by women in trading into commercial markets and programmes like Made in Nigeria, um, which works with smallholder cocoa farmers to help them access inputs, training and finance. And women make up one third of the farmers that, that work with Made, and the programme expects to increase farm yields overall by 40%. More broadly, um, and this is very much the ambition that we set out in our economic development strategy on the back of the high-level panel's recommendations, we're committed to continuously driving gender awareness into everything we do um, in DFID. And my prediction is that you'll see a lot more um, from us on that, both from DFID but also elsewhere in the UK government over the next few years. We, um, we have a system of gender markers in DFID which enables us to track which programmes are giving what emphasis to gender overall, whether they be in the economic space, the private sector development space, um, the health or the education space. And through that we know that 70% of our agriculture programmes now consider gender-related issues compared to only 25% in 2007, so we're really pleased with that progress. Um, we've asked some of our partners, such as AgDevCo, um, and also the Africa Enterprise Challenge Fund to develop gender strategies. And we want to influence, and we're working to influence others to prioritize gender equality um, across everything that they do. Um, we have had a really good partnership with the World Bank over the last few years on their pioneering flagship doing business index, which all countries use to look at where they rank um, overall vis-a-vis -vis others in terms of ease of doing business. And we work with the World Bank for the first time to ensure that the particular challenges faced by women and women's ability to own and um, operate their own businesses are reflected in that concretely. Um, finally, in DFID, we're investing in research and evidence in order to better understand the barriers that are actually faced by women farmers um, and to develop and test new approaches. So, for example, understanding the implications for women and girls of different types of agriculture commercialization um, so large or small farmer approaches is central to the research being conducted by a platform we've recently launched, um, the Agriculture Policy Research in Africa program. So finally, I just wanted to focus on what can you all do? Um, I hope that many of you have seen these hashtags. Um, please do look up the womeneconomicempowerment.org website where the UN High Level Panel on Women's Economic Empowerment is hosted. Um, I think the main message here is that we want everyone to be part of this movement. We want everyone to be part of the action. The High Level Panel's second report, which builds on the first launch last September and is specifically around actions, particularly for business, um, is going to be launched next Tuesday at the Commission for the Status of Women um, in New York. 
Um, as I mentioned earlier, the panel really is unique and quite special in the diversity of the stakeholders that it's brought together, um, from the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank to the um, ITUC, the International Trade Union Conference, um, from self-employed women's organisations and associations in India to Citigroup and other big, bank, uh, other big banks um, and other financial experts. So we really do feel that we've, through the panel, created somewhat of a global momentum um, and we're changing the global narrative about how others perceive the challenges and the opportunities for women's economic empowerment. So as I said, the action plan will include how to address economic empowerment in agriculture in particular, and specific actions we, we think, we hope, to be included in the report are working with the collectives of women um, in developing countries to identify laws that may be limiting women's empowerment and ability to own real property, and then working with governments on ways to address this, and providing training and advice to women farmers in particular on how to access markets and supply chains. So I think we very much feel that everyone in this room has a very important role to play in all of that. Um, the plan will also have a wider set of messages for all businesses to address gender-related inequalities with six basic questions that we want every business to be able to answer about women in every level of their leadership and their workforce, but also in every level of their supply chains. So the panel will have that challenge to, to all of us, to all of you. Can you answer those five questions for yourself in the context of your own companies and your own work? So I urge you all to read it, um, to read the report, to share it, to help us celebrate it, and to unite around delivering it. Um, and I, I really hope that organisations, that conversations like this mean that we will all continue to champion women's economic empowerment in every walk of life. Um, as I said at the start, the moment really is now. The collective around and the action around Global Goal 5 on gender equality has unprecedented support. So making progress over the next couple of years is absolutely critical to seeing that momentum result in real change. Thank you.